I want to share with you a typical conversation that I have at work. It goes something like this. Katie, I can't do it. I'm too afraid. What if I fail? What if it won't work out for me? So I simply ask back, why? What is holding you back? What is it that's stopping you from going after everything you want and deserve? And without fail, some version of the words, I don't have any confidence. I lack self-confidence. I'm not confident enough to do it. Over and over and over again, I hear some version of one of those statements. In fact, for a single year, I tracked every single initial conversation that I had. And it didn't matter what someone did for a living, how much money they made, what their title was, where they went to school, or where in the United States they were. Every single conversation brought up the topic of confidence. And here's the thing. I don't just hear about confidence from my work. I hear it from my friends and my family. I hear it from my peers and my colleagues. This idea that I'm not going to go do something because I'm not confident. Y'all, I even hear it from strangers because I'm totally that person that makes friends with the Uber driver. Anybody else? <laughs> Uber driver friends? Yes. And here's the thing. I get it because I too have used some version of those statements to stop me. I have said, I'm not confident enough to X, Y, Z. But here's the thing that really became much more startling for me. And that was when I was specifically talking with women, bright women, ambitious women, savvy women, talented women, women who have incredible ideas, they would just stop. They wouldn't take any action on what they wanted to do. And that just broke my heart. It broke my heart in such a way that I, I wanted to hit my head against the wall in my office every single day. Because I kept thinking over and over and over, these women, we as women, you and me and all of the other women that we know, we have big, huge things to do in this lifetime. Big, huge things. And we cannot get caught up in the confidence rut. In fact, this became so important to me in my work that 2018, I dubbed the year of confidence. It is my word of the year, and it hangs on a poster in my, my office. And I think about it. I've researched it. I like to read about it. I have conversations about it because I just simply keep thinking, what is it that we are stopping ourselves from doing? What life are we stopping ourselves from having? What dream are we stopping ourselves from going after? And yet at the same time, during all of this in 2018, do I realize that I too have been holding myself back because of a lack of confidence. I've been saying for several years now that I want to be the strong, healthy, fit version of myself. And here's the thing, I hate exercise. Anyone else just loathe? Yes. Okay, but who of you loves exercise? I know, yeah, there's you people. You people. Ugh. Y'all, I have tried everything. I've done yoga. I did jazzercise in my 20s. I joined the Y. Actually, I think my husband and I have joined a couple of Ys. Um, recently, I joined the Orange Theory bandwagon, right? Because rowing, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> and here's the thing. I don't like exercise because I had gotten into the place where my body, I didn't feel like it physically could do what I wanted it to do. I was embarrassed. I had comparisonitis. I would look at the person next to me in the yoga class or the Orange Theory class, 
And I would say, oh my goodness, I can't do that. And so I just stayed home. I quit the class. Or in many cases, I kept paying for it and just didn't go. <laughs> Shane Orange Theory charged us yesterday. So this past May, I was at a cocktail party and I ran into a girlfriend of mine who's a trainer. And I run into her socially every once in a while. And we, I always say to her, oh, Emily, we need to get together. I should, I should hire you. We should start working out together. And she said, great. And I said, oh, I'll call you next week. And I think she was so sick of me doing this to her. She said, no, go get your phone right now. We're scheduling something today. And we did. We scheduled something that day. Y'all, I showed up at the gym to meet with Emily, my personal trainer extraordinaire. And she measured every single part of my body. And she had me do all these baseline tests, push-ups and sit-ups and planks and other things that I didn't even know what I was doing, but she was telling me that I should do it. Y'all, it was hard. It is really hard. And in fact, if Emily had a dollar for every time I told her something was hard, she would be a gazillionaire, easily a gazillionaire. And what I love about Emily is that every single time I look at her and say, Emily, this is hard, she looks at me and says, yep, it's supposed to be. Keep going, you've got five more of those. She did that to me yesterday morning. So what I love though, is that Emily pushes me. She helps me see things that I didn't see in myself. So one day, it dawned on me while we were working out, I'm sure she was having me do something really hard that I loved, didn't love. And it dawned on me that building confidence is the exact same thing as building our body muscles. Let me explain to you what I mean. Do you know how many Americans sit on their sofa and just think that I'll just stay trim and fit and, and, and build muscle, right? Like we are the fattest country in the planet. What we know is that that doesn't work. We actually have to go do the work. And when we do the workout, that's when our muscles tear and then they rebuild and repair themselves, right? So we do the work and we build the muscle. And I started thinking about this in terms of confidence, right? So often I hear people say, Katie, when I'm confident, I'll go do X, Y, Z. Yep. I, I'm not confident yet, but when I get there, I'll do it. So here's what I'm going to tell you. You have to do the work to get the confidence. You don't get the confidence and then go do the work. That's backwards. It's not how it works. It's the same thing as sitting on your sofa thinking you're going to grow a six pack abs, <laughs> right? I mean, and y'all, if, if that was true, I would still be a size two. So it just, it doesn't work, take my word for it. It dawned on me that that was the missing piece can you simply imagine, just in this room, just all of us in this room, who we are, the ideas that are in our head. We've already heard three amazing stories. The ideas that are in our head, the ideas that are in our heart and in our gut. Can you imagine if we all found the confidence to go out and do them, how much life-changing things we could make happen? Like, it gives me goosebumps because I'm in awe of the power of women. I really am. I want you to think back over your lifetime. I want you to think about the things that you have done, even when you've been scared, even when you thought it was hard, even when you knew you had no confidence to go and do it, even when you were anxiously excited. Think about it. Maybe it was that class in college that you enrolled in and you were terrified of. Maybe it was the first day that you walked into a new job 
and you didn't feel qualified for it. Maybe it was the day you brought your babies home from the hospital. I have a lot of friends bringing them home lately. I've heard it's scary. Maybe it was your first home that you bought or falling in love and admitting that you wanted to be a part of that. Think about every single thing in your life that you've done that's hard, that was difficult. Here's the thing. You've been building your confidence your whole entire life. You just may not have known that because you probably didn't have confidence when you did those hard things. You probably weren't able to do what you thought that you could do, but you went ahead and did it anyway. For some of us, it might be snow skiing at 29. So here is my action for you. Here's what I want to challenge you to do. I want each and every single one of you to create a list that I call the badass stuff I've accomplished list. And here's what I want it to do. I want you to think about all of those things that you've done before you were ready, when you were scared, when you were nervous, when you were anxious, and I want you to write them down on this list. And here's the way that I love to do this. I like to grab my favorite color pen or Sharpie marker, love Sharpie markers. I also highly prefer big giant sticky notes because then you can put them places. But if you like little paper, that's fine too, that'll work. But I want you to sit down and I want you to write through all of those things. And here's the thing that I want you to know. Your list won't be the same as yours. Your list won't have the same stuff that yours does. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. In fact, some of the things that I want you to write down on your list don't even have to make sense to anyone else on this entire planet. It only has to have significance for you. And I'll tell you why. See, because you've done hard things and you can do them again. When I was 29, my husband and I were invited to go with my family on a trip to Whistler. It was three weeks before the Winter Olympics, and I am a huge Olympics junkie. I love to watch the Olympics. Summer, winter, doesn't matter. And so I thought, this will be fantastic. We'll go. We'll go skiing. This will be great. Well, one, I don't like cold weather. And two, at 29, I had never been skiing. So why I thought I would go and ski on Whistler and Blackholm, I'm not really sure. But we ventured up to Canada, and I went to ski school, because that's what you do, right? Any skiers in here? A couple of skiers? Shane had grown up skiing in youth group trips and in college, not a skier. So I go to ski school. Y'all, skiing sucks. <laughs> It sucks. It is cold. It is like, like you strap two pieces of plywood, fiberglass, I don't even know what it is, and then you hurl yourself down a mountain with snow on it. Like really, people love this? I mean, people do love it. They were there a couple weeks later for the Olympics. Well, I hated it. And here, can I just, for one other thing, those snow boots, those ski boot things you have to wear, I would rather put on a pair of five-inch stilettos, go to a cocktail party, and stand on concrete than ever wear those ski boots. <laughs> All the ladies in the room are like, yeah, I know what you're talking about, the cocktail parties with concrete. Woo. <laughs> but you know what? That memory in my life is on my badass list of stuff I've accomplished. I will probably never get on skis again. Ugh, I do like opera ski. I figured that out. <laughs> opera ski and I are friends. But I don't think I'll ever do it again. And in fact, I, I wedged, I learned wedge all the way down the bunny slope. That's me wedging <laughs> down the bunny slope. Yeah, it, that, I mean, this guy's walking. It's, not really skiing, but <laughs> you got to have a picture. 
Uh, it is on my list because at the end, after I did this, I was so happy. Because when I look back on my list, and when I look at the things that I am not confident enough to face, when I think about what I'm trying to achieve in life and where I'm trying to go, the dreams that I have in my heart and what I know God has put me on the planet to do in my gut, I look back at this list and these silly pictures, and I know that no matter what is coming up in front of me, I have done hard things. I have done them. And that is why I think it is so important for you all to have your own list. Because I know without, beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're going to come up against things that are hard, that are scary, that do make you nervous, that make you anxious. Sometimes they'll even make you excitedly anxious. But we as women, we cannot afford to get stuck in the rut of lack of self-confidence. We cannot. So we must have this list as our battle, battle armor to be able to say, I can do it. I can ski, kind of. <laughs> I want you to make your own list. Here is what I know. I truly believe because there is only one you that the one and only you is destined for greatness. I also know that you have an entire lifetime behind you that has shown you time and time and time again that you have done hard things, that you have grown confidence, that you can grow and build and maintain your confidence. Ladies, we've got a lot of work to do. We have big, bold things to go and accomplish but I know that you're confident enough to go out and do it. Thanks.